Uh, we'll wait for other people to join us, then we'll start. Uh, it's already 7 9. I think we should start today's yes. So, hmm. hello everyone. This is uh, the week 5 of the problem solving session of Ekwasko course. Uh, whose uh, prime instructor is Professor Shumukash Gupta Paiji And, uh, okay, let me turn on the Okay. Just one second.
and uh, I'm Kalpita Nath and I'm research scholar at IT Corrupt itself. So well then uh, without further ado, I'll start with today's session. So on the previous day, we were left off with uh, one question. So I'll start with that. You try and solve this question. Uh, so the equations, the energy equations and momentum equations that will be useful in this problem uh, are shared below. Uh, so use that to in order to solve this problem and uh, what is this about there is a flow of oil in journal, uh, journal bearing and can be approximated as a parallel flow between two large plates with one plate moving and other plate is stationary so in a bearing if they have considered a small section of that and they have considered it like obviously in bearing one plate will be moving only so one plate is moving and another is stationary so we can uh, we can consider it as plate flow so uh, considering two large isothermal plates separated by 2 mm thick oil film and the upper plate moves at a constant velocity of 12 meter per second while the lower plate is stationary both plates are maintained at 20 degrees celsius obtain the relation for uh, velocity and temperature distribution in the oil and determine the maximum temperature in the oil and heat flux from the oil to each plate right so what will be the maximum temperature and where the maximum temperature will be just uh, this is the second part and the first part will be obtain the relationship for velocity and temperature distribution so you have to uh, solve the equations for uh, and for that you need the momentum and energy uh, balance equation and uh, you have to solve that to get the corresponding equation for this situation so i'll give you some time to solve this if you are having any doubt regarding this question for understanding uh, tell me i'll explain you okay so no doubt then uh, i'll wait for some time and you can solve it and whoever uh, will solve it first uh, you can unmute yourself and tell me the answer Are you solving it? Hello, are you guys solving it? Take. Yeah, tell me. I'm trying. Okay, sure, sure. You have understood how to solve it, right? No, ma'am. <laughs> I did not just. But again, last class. So. Uh, no, no, no. Sir, I have taught in the class now how to solve the momentum equations to get the corresponding. Uh, like, you have done fluid course, fluid phenomena. Yeah. You have done the fluid phenomena course, right? Uh, ma'am, uh, ma'am, fluid, uh, like the transport phenomena course. Uh, transport phenomena, yeah, that too, and even fluid mechanics, basically. No, ma'am. Transport phenomena also you have not done. Okay, sir, uh, have sir have taught in the class now how to like uh, use the equations, the continuity equation and the momentum equation, and energy equation to get the corresponding, uh, like solution for one specific problem. Yes, ma'am. So you will use you will first uh, use them to derive one equation. Then you will use the boundary conditions. What the boundary conditions are? Then you will get a temperature equation and one for velocity. That is momentum. Yes. So from that you try to solve this. Otherwise, I'll help you. Okay.
okay i'll give you a bit details like uh, how to start with it as most of you have not attended the previous class okay so first we'll start with the continuity equation okay and uh, for the continuity equation tell u del x plus del v del y is equal to 0 it's visible right um, then see uh, del v uh, like there is only one di one dimensional flow like uh, only in uh, x direction right so there won't be no uh, v component right so this will be zero obviously and that's why del u del x is equal to 0. That means, what does that mean? That means u is only a function of y and not a function of x. Okay. From that we uh, get this. Now, the x component of velocity doesn't, doesn't change in the flow direction. Uh, that means u is not a function of x as we can uh, absorb from you and uh, okay here uh, there is no uh, pressure gradient right because there the flow it is count uh, it is county flow and uh, sorry it is weight flow and uh, the flow is only maintained by the motion of uh, the upper weight and uh, there is no pressure gradient been indicated in the question plan. So we won't be considering any pressure gradient. So that's why dp dx is equal to 0. Only we will consider in any question, we will only consider those things that are already given in the question. And those are not given, we will just consider them to be 0. That are the assumptions that we are making. Okay. Now, next the x momentum equation. So it's already given in the question that is rho u del u del x plus v del u del y is equal to mu del squared u del y squared minus del p del x. Okay. Now, from here, del u del x is 0 and del u del y is there and uh, del u uh, del y but v is 0 at the same time. So, this will be 0 and del p del x is 0. So, obviously, del squared u del y squared is equal to 0. That means, uh, now if we will use this equation, what we will do? We will first integrate this with respect to y. So, we will get u is equal to c1y plus c2. Now, we will uh, check what the boundary conditions are. Now, there is one boundary condition that is the lower uh, plate stationary. So, this will be 0 and the upper plate that is at x equal to L because we can see it starts from the, the uh, origin is the lower plate, the stationary plate and at x equal to L we have the upper plate. So, that is at velocity of uh, 12 meter per second. So, we can simply consider it as V, right, V. So, if we will apply this, we will get U. Uh, this one we will get as u y that is a function of y is y upon l if we consider this as v so this is v right now frictional heating due to viscous dissipation in this case is significant because of high viscosity because uh, this we can see as it is indicated in the question that uh, it is a viscous fluid uh, the fluid is viscous. So, we can't consider that uh, if we flow a uh, viscous fluid over any of these uh, bearings, there will be corresponding heating. So, heating is been involved here, but because of the high viscosity, right? And the plates are isothermal and there is no change in the, uh, uh, no, and there is no change in the flow direction. That's the temperature depends on Y only. That means, it said that, uh, no, in the in the uh, in the flow direction that is in the x direction, temperature doesn't change, and both of the plates are at the same uh, temperature. So only in the y direction, the heat flow that is uh, the temperature change will take place, right? As we can see uh, in the question. 
okay so that means t is a function of y only and uh, now the energy equation as it is indicated in the question is if we will solve this rho c p u del t del x plus v del t del y is equal to k del square t del x square plus del square t del y square right plus mu phi this is the uh, viscous dissipation and phi is given uh, as it is indicated in the question now uh, okay so now here v is zero the temperature change around x axis is zero right and uh, dx is zero so this will be only k uh, del square t del y square only this term plus mu phi is equal to zero now what is phi phi is the viscous dissipation that is given as to del u del x whole square plus del v del y whole square right plus del u del x plus del v del y whole square sorry del u del y and del v del x so obviously del u del y will be there only and del v del x will be zero del v del uh, del v del y will be zero and del u del x will be zero so this only reduces to twice of del u del y whole square so this we uh, if we will write this we will write here so what comes how the equation comes comes as we will neglect this too okay so del square t del y square is equal to mu was there right so is equal to minus mu del u del y whole square okay now del u del y now we will again come back to this equation if you will consider this as equation one so from that we can get del u del y as v this v by l right from this equation if we will differentiate it we'll just get v upon l now we will put this in over here in equation number two so this will term as uh, k del square t del y square is equal to minus mu v v by l okay this is the main equation now now dividing both sides um, by k and integrating twice so what we did here is that we, we just divided by k so this will be del square t del y square is equal to minus mu by k v by l okay now we will what we'll do we'll just integrate it so if we're integrating it this will t y minus mu by 2 k y by l v square plus c 3 y plus c 4 just one second okay now boundary conditions okay um, boundary conditions if we will consider the temperature uh, at which both plates are maintained as t naught if you will uh, if we will uh, consider this then this will be um, boundary conditions will be t at 0 is t naught and t at l is t naught right now the equation this equation this equation if you will consider this as equation number 3 this will become as ty is equal to t naught plus mu v square 2k y by l minus y square by l square ok mm. now what is the second question determine the maximum temperature in the oil and heat flux from oil to each plate 
okay so oil is it uh, uh like okay let me uh, uh hmm. so what will be the temperature that will be heat flux that will be uh we'll considering here at uh, like uh, from the oil to each plate so max, uh, maximum temperature we have to find out and the heat flux we have to find out okay so for that what we will do we'll be using this equation mainly now so this let us termed as equation number four okay so uh, let us pause here i have shown you how to solve and how we have uh, deemed the like we have found out the temperature equation by using the momentum the continuity and the energy equations now the next part is to find out the maximum temperature and the heat flux uh, i hope there is no doubt uh, regarding anything till now any doubt no ma'am okay then uh, this is the second part that is b uh, it is very easy so you can you have just have to find out maximum temperature so if you will just differentiate it you can find the point where the maximum temperature will be there and that point you just can put the in the mean and uh, like temperature based equation that is the temperature uh, equation and uh, temperature gradient basically and over there if you will put you will find the uh, maximum temperature value like the equation okay and uh, uh, over there if you will put the values the every values are given here so you can find the maximum temperature and after you find the maximum temperature you can uh, you know the for conduction what is the heat flux what is the equation for heat flux so you will use that to find out the corresponding heat flux for the temperature that is given so i'll give you 5 minutes to solve this and this second part you do by yourself i'll wait for some time you come in next Are you able to solve this? You are. Uh, are you able to understand how to solve? I am trying. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, the, told you the way. Just differentiate, find the point where the maximum temperature will be there, and put the point over the mean equation. Yes, temperature. Yeah. And then, if you find the temperature gradient, you can easily find the flux. So it's uh, very easy. Uh, mind one thing here we won't be using heat flux like uh, we won't be calculating by convection why because here we have to find out it said now from oil to each plate so we have to find out at the boundary of the plate so over there uh, there won't be convection it will be conduction so we will be using conduction equation for finding the flux because it okay. is clearly said we have to find out at the plate yeah yes ma'am
have you solved it hello no ma'am where are you facing trouble ma'am the differentiation to find out maximum temperature where where have you any data data you have definition data i guess now so you know the at which point at which point you can find the maximum temperature tell me the point hello yes ma'am yeah tell me the point where you are finding the maximum temperature from where uh, the t will uh, t will be equal to 0 Ma'am, in the differentiation to find out the maximum point, right? Hmm. So you have to differentiate it first, na? Then you have to put it zero. Then you will find the value of uh, y. Uh, the temperature will make. What What is their value of y? Ma'am, that only I am not able to solve. Okay. Uh, C. T T. T Y. Is equal to zero. Well put. So what is dt dy? Dt dy is if we will solve this, it will be mu v square by two k l, right? This will be l if we will put it outside. This there are two l's. If you, one l will put outside, then this is y is y differentiation is one minus another y differentiation is two y by l. Yes, this is the differentiation, so we will just put it zero. So now, if we will solve for y, that is, we have to solve for this. You can easily solve it, right? Solve it. What is there? Uh, like, it is one minus two y upon l is equal to zero, because this will be zero complete. So y yes. is equal to l upon two. So this is the y value at which the temperature is maximum. L by two. So just put this value in the main temperature equation. In the main equation, that is what equation number four. So we'll put this in equation number four. Just one second. This will be T max uh, is equal to T L by two. So this is T naught plus mu V square by two K. L by two by L minus L by two two square by L square, right? So this is T naught plus mu V square by eight K. So you just put the corresponding values. Like what is T naught? T naught is the initial temperature. The temperature piece, the plates are there, so it is twenty. Right. Plus mu. The mu and K values are not. Okay, mu and k values are not given. Okay, no problem. Okay, good. So, should I have been given? Actually, in previous class, I think I have included, but in this class, I have uh, forgot. Okay, this will be point eight second per meter square, and velocity is already given as twelve meter per second square upon eight, and k value is point one four five watt per meter degree Celsius. So this is will convert it to one newton meter per second. Just make write it clearly. One newton meter per second. So if we will solve this, you will get the value of one one nine degrees Celsius. This is the maximum temperature. So now find the heat flux. So heat flux is K. So I said you it will be at the surface of the plate. So at that there will be conduction, right? Yes. So the conduction equation will be applied here. So at y is equal to zero, you will just put every value. So you know that this part you can do. Find this. Uh, there will be two. One will be this at the lower plate, and another will be Q L dot. This will be K D D D Y at y is equal. So these are the two values that we need to find. Find this one. I'll give you two minutes for this.
Forty nine point nine and fifty six point zero five six. Forty nine point nine. See, first one. Solve it for you. This is. If we will differentiate it, you will find mu b square by two k l. And uh, you will put y zero. So we have already differentiated it earlier, right? So this will be first one will be one minus here. So it will be one minus zero. See, uh, let me show you this one, right? So this will be one minus two y by l, and this is y is zero. So this we will put zero. So this we get. So we'll just put the value. So k we already know from here. K is point one four five. No, this is me. Sorry. Uh, K is one point one four five. Ah, correct. Correct. K is one point one four five. And uh, uh, then this is mu. So mu is point eight into twelve whole square upon two. K on the K K cuts off, so this we don't need to write into L. L is point zero zero two. So this one watt one uh, one newton meter. So that's just we have converted uh, newton meter per second to watt. I think it's. So this uh, if we will solve this value, it will come out to be twenty eight point eight zero zero. Sorry, twenty eight comma eight zero zero newton. Sorry, what? Just, is the heat at L? And if we will, uh, sorry, at not. We have to find out at L now. So at L also, at L also, it will be. This will be just what? This will be just everything will be same here, and in the bracket it will be one minus two. So if it is one minus two, and there will be already one minus, so this is minus Q not. You will, if you will solve this, you will get this. So this is twenty eight eight zero zero watt one two. So these are just uh, in the opposite directions. The flux is just in the opposite direction. The value is similar. And obviously, if the temperature is similar, and there is no other heat source, right? So obviously, the temp uh, like the heat flux should be similar on both the walls. But it will be in opposite direction. That is, one will be in top direction and the other will be in bottom. Anything you like? Any doubt you are facing on this question? No way. Yeah. Okay. Then let's proceed to today's question. Okay. So I think sir, I have taught you in the class already. What is transition Reynolds number? So first, uh, like over this class, we are. Uh, Uh, what we are doing we will be solving problems on boundary layer right on temperature like the on thermal and the velocity boundary layers 
So first we need to know the transition Reynolds number for that. That is at what Reynolds number it will transit from uh, laminar to double nuclear. So that is 5 in 10 to the power 5. And uh, Reynolds number formula we also know. And uh, then for laminar flow, I have included here the thickness, uh, boundary layer thickness uh, equation. And uh, this will be different for laminar and turbulent. And also the skin friction coefficient. And uh, uh, what will be the, this is the for, uh, for a point, for a point skin friction. So um, uh, for any x direction. But uh, if we'll average it, this will be twice of uh, at any x. And for turbulent flow, it will be 5 upon 4. These are already derived. Uh, sir have shown a few of the equation in the class, but others I have included here. So you can, while solving the equations, like uh, questions, you can use this. And Nusser's number is equal to 0.332 Reynolds number to the power half and Prendel number to the power 1 by 3. And uh, for uh, turbulent fluid is 0 0.0296. And uh, Chilton Polburn equation, uh, like analogy, uh, we will use it in some later problems. This is also included here. Okay, uh, now proceeding to the next question, like first question. Yeah. So, when the hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness delta, uh, which is the distance from the surface at which the local velocity u reaches 99% of the pristine velocity, which of the following relation is valid for the laminar flow over the plate? You have done the uh, lectures, uh, the previous lectures. So I have already taught you the boundary layer. So, what will be the delta at which the local velocity will reach the 99% of the free stream velocity? What will be the delta? And it is already indicated the laminar flow. So, that's why. You can easily use, uh, just one second, this equation, right? You can take a picture of this uh, so that uh, we don't need to go back to this again. And if you will find Nusser's number also uh, for laminar flow, Nusser's number, average Nusser's number uh, rather, will be twice of the Nusser's number at any point, that is at any x. Uh, and uh, for turbulent, it will be 5 upon 4 of uh, at any x. It will be same, the, uh, the same uh, thing that we are finding in skin friction coefficient, the same thing we will be finding in Nusser's number. The average value will be related same in the similar fashion. Okay. You take a photo of this so that we can proceed to the first question. And because in every, almost every question you will be using this, needing this analogies. Have you taken a picture? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then uh, let us proceed to the first question. Solve this one. You will be like, uh, it's laminar flow, everything is given. So, you will be using the analogy to solve the delta at which the local velocity will reach the 99% of free stream velocity. Option B. Option B. No. Solve it again. Just check where you have gone from.
have you solved it Option C. No, no. Check once. Check once. Where you are going now? You tell me what you are doing. Which equation you are using? Uh, delta equals to uh, five uh, divided by R e x to the power. Oh wait, man. Yes, yes. It will be five x, right? Yes, man. Yes. Because it is delta upon x. Yeah. There is what we are. You are going now. Yes, it will be proportional to x to the power half. Yeah, correct. Okay, so let us solve this now. <clears throat> so the first question, delta, it is uh, said laminar flow, so it will be 5.0 x upon root over Reynolds number. Right? And Reynolds number we already know as it will be 5.0 x upon root over rho b x upon mu. So if we will take it proportional, it will be x upon root over x. So this is proportional to x to the power half. That is option A. Okay. Now question number 2. This fairly simple question. Now question number 2. So these are the temperature profiles for heat transfer from one fluid to another. That is there is a hot fluid on one side and cold fluid on the other side of the wall. So, which of the temperature profile is correct one? Tell me. Anyone? Then option C. Hmm? Option C. Mm. Check forms. Option. Just one second. Yeah. Which one you are referring to C? It is right side top one, right? Yes, ma'am. No, it is not. Check once. Once again, you check which one is the correct. constant temperature uh, in the hot fluid right and it will gradually decrease at the when it will be coming in contact of the wall so this the first one will be like this and again the same thing will be followed in the cold fluid so it will be gradual decrease in the cold fluid and the temperature will remain constant in the bulb so this will be the uh, profile in the cold fluid right so yeah it is option B. next question the temperature distribution within the boundary layer for the flow over a flat plate of infinite width is in how many dimensions? Okay, uh, before that, let me give you one simple problem. Mm -hmm. In two questions, it is related to question number two only. So, if these are two walls, right? And this is one temperature profile and this is another temperature profile. Okay? This is T infinite, this is the wall temperature and this is T infinite, this is wall temperature. So here the temperature drop is very less and here the temperature drop is more, right? So if this is H2 and if this is H1, that is heat transfer question, here is H2, here is H1. So if Q is same, 
in which case h is greater option a is h2 greater than h1 and option b is h1 greater than h2 which option is correct how you will solve this this is a part of question number 2 tell me what will be the option the option that is correct any problem in understanding ma'am one dimensional uh -huh. no not this question i have given in the writing pad check i have given one question solve that first there are two temperature profiles given the temperature is same the bulk temperature is still infinite one in one temperature profile uh, the temperature drop is almost uh, close to zero and in another there is a huge temperature drop so which of the heat transfer coefficient will be larger option a h2 is larger than like h2 is greater than h1 and option b is h1 greater than h2 which one is correct if q is same obviously the heat transfer should be same tell me option a option a yeah correct how tell me uh, ma'am according to the formula uh, heat flux uh, is given by convective heat transfer coefficient into the temperature difference hmm. so if the temperature dif uh, temperature difference will be high then the heat transfer coefficient will be low hmm correct yeah correct uh, so if we will write in terms of uh, q right uh, the heat transfer so it will be h1 a delta t1 and for uh, like situation 2 it will be h2 a delta t2 that means h1 upon h2 the wall is same right as i have already said h1 upon h2 is delta t2 upon delta t1 so delta t2 is less than delta t1 it's already given that's why delta t2 upon delta t1 is less than 1 that means h1 upon h2 is less than 1 that is h1 less than h2 that is option a okay mm. uh and what about question number 3 what you have said which will be the correct option in one dimension mm. check again Sir, I have solved this in the class, no? I have sir solved it in one dimension. Check Then uh, only x component and y component uh, are there, so possible. Only x and y component. Yeah. So it will be two dimensional, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So question number three, option is B. See, uh, if this is the boundary layer, sir, I have told you already in the class. Let me uh, give you a bit in. Bits and pieces of that. Okay, 
so this is the temperature difference t infinity this is delta t and this is the velocity profile so this is delta and this is u infinity this is u this is t okay so the energy equation is b s del t del x plus b y del t del y is equal to alpha del t del so even in dimensionless form also we can write this t s t minus t t s upon t infinity minus t s sir i have already shown you in the class so t star and v x uh, v x like this we can write as this we can write as u uh, star where u star is u upon u infinity and v star is v upon v uh, u infinity and y star is y upon l x star is x upon l so this becomes this will be used in later of your questions so this is u star del t star del x star plus v star del t star del y star is equal to 1 upon Reynolds number Prandtl term per del square t star i am not going into the details of the derivation for sir i've already shown you in the class so from this we'll just uh, dimensionalize it and this will be the main equation okay okay then uh, let us proceed to the next question the hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness is always greater than the thermal boundary layer thickness whether it is true the statement or false Anyone? And false. Yeah. Correct. Because uh, we already know that is delta upon delta t is equal to prime delta number to the power one upon three, right? This question also. Okay. Mm, so delta is greater than delta t as prime delta number greater than one, and delta is less than delta t as prime delta number less than one. If prime delta number is less than one, and delta is equal to delta t, prime delta number is equal to one. This means that it depends on the Prandtl number. Always we can't uh, give this statement. So this is false. Question number five. An interesting aspect of turbulence is that the time average value of fluctuating component is zero. However, the time average of the product of the fluctuating components is not zero. Choose the right one about the correctness of the statement. Like if both of them are true, then we will deem this answer as true. Otherwise, if one of the uh, statement is false, then we will deem it as false. Anyone who can uh, who can tell me the answer for this? You can explain the question. See, sir, I have told you now, like uh, in turbulence, uh, turbulent this, there will be a mean velocity u, and there will be some fluctuations like this. Right, so this term as let us term as u star. So about these fluctuations, I am talking about. So, uh, see, um, if one fluctuation, uh, we are uh, adding up. Like if we add up all the fluctuations of this, this will eventually be add up to zero. But obviously, if you we'll multiply it, some is negative, some is positive, it will be superimposed. Like, see, if this is one is like one fluctuation is like this, another fluctuation is like it is not not necessary that every of this amplitude, this amplitude, right? Amplitude of the fluctuations will be same. So it can be like overall fluctuations will be zero if it is averaged right the average value will be zero this average value will be zero but the uh, product the average of the product may or may not be zero have you understood about these fluctuations we are talking about the other thing that is already told in the class these fluctuations 
like in uh, in laminar flow we have only one velocity but in uh, turbulent flow this is u will be u instantaneous we term is at instantaneous velocity this will be u bar plus u star this is the uh, fluctuation this will be different at every point that's why it is very difficult to calculate the velocity of turbulent flow yes ma'am So next question, let's proceed to the next question. So yeah, now the problem comes. So what is the first problem? Mm, ASP temperature and wind tunnel is shown in the figure. Uh, ASP temperature is also given and uh, it is said that the uh, surface temperature is equal to the uh, bulk temperature. Right. The minimum plate length required to achieve Reynolds number of 10 to the power 8. What is that value of x? So it is very easy, right? Just one equation and you will get the answer. Anyone? Anyone? You can solve that. Anyone? I'm solving. What? Yeah, yeah. option A. Yeah. Okay, so, Reynolds number is u infinity x upon u. So, here we need to find out at which x uh, the positive is required. So, infinity, this is L minimum mu. So, this is Ten to the power eight new upon u infinity. So this is ten to the power eight into fifteen point seven one into ten to the power six is already given. Minus six. And this is fifty. So this value comes out to be thirty five four. This is option. Okay, next question. During the analysis of boundary layer of a system with two dimension and steady flow without any pressure gradient, the inertial terms can be safely neglected when compared to the viscous term. Choose the right one about the correctness of the statement. Inertial terms like 
when the uh, we do the analysis of the boundary layer that is we found, find out the uh, for the momentum modular we find out like we will do balance right the inertial term there will be convective term there will be uh, uh, there will be viscous term and there will be pressure gradient right pressure term so without it is said without any pressure gradient the inertial terms are safely neglected as compared to viscous the inertial terms are neglected whether it is true or whether it is false Hmm? Tell me again. Mem true. How come it is true? How initial terms can be neglected? Uh, Mem, uh, first uh, mm. pressure gradient uh, is neglected. Huh. Um, but then inertial uh, terms uh, like uh, the uh, gravity and all. No, gravity is different, initial term is different, initial term, term is left and same. Everything like uh, rho, uh, then uh, u, del u, del x plus v, del v, del y, that is the initial term. How it is neglected? The term that is responsible for the inertia. Yes. It won't be, it will be false, okay? Because uh, initial term when you are uh, deriving, it is not neglected. Even if pressure gradient is there or not, initial term will be there. Because the, it is not said like initial term should be neglected. If it is like, if the Reynolds number is very low, like if it is 1 or less than 1, at that time we neglect this. But we won't, like it is not included, like it is not indicated here, right? So why we will neglect it? We won't be ever neglect it. Because it will be false. So it will be. Now we have one more problem. Uh, just one second. Yeah. So boundary layer temperature distribution is shown here. The temperature profile is also given here. Ty minus Ts upon T infinity T minus Ts is equal to 1 upon uh, 1 minus exponential minus Prandtl number U infinity Y upon U. The numerical value of the surface heat flux, we have to find out. And the data given is thermal conductivity at 300 degrees Celsius, that is uh, 0.023 watt per meter Kelvin. So what we have to find out? We have to find out the heat flux. It is very easy, right? The temperature profile is also given. So just uh, one, one, two line is required to solve this. Okay? You solve this, I'll come in one minute. I'm giving you one minute for solving this.
है वेरी मच सॉल्टेड हेलो एनी वन सॉल्ट मैम द वैल्यू इज कमिंग क्लोज टू ऑप्शन सी ऑप्शन सी नो 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 नॉट करेक्ट Tell me what you have done. Hello, you know that we have to uh, apply Fourier's law here, right? Yes, ma'am. Ah, so Fourier's law uh, over there uh, we get dt dy at y zero. That is the temperature gradient, right? And temperature gradient is already given here. The so temperature profile is given. So from there we can find dt dy at y zero to zero. So just put that, and what you will get, you just put it over that equation, the Fourier law, and then you put the corresponding values. Everything is given, right? ट वॉट First t minus t infinity minus t s will be there. Now, this will be uh, exponential. Yeah, this will be uh, exponent. This the constant with y. This will come out, right? A simple rule of uh, differentiation. Your infinity upon. So this will be exponential minus prime derivative number u infinity y by at everything of this will be at y is equal to zero. So if you will do that, qs double dot uh, double dash is equal to minus k t infinity minus t s, and we will put at y is equal to zero. So this will be zero. This whole term will be zero. So exponential zero is one. The value is one, right? So this will be the number u infinity upon here. So this is the value we will put as this is minus zero point zero two six three. 
right yeah it's given uh, watt per meter kelvin into temperature difference is 100 kelvin how uh cause this the air temperature is 400 and the uh, uh, the surface temperature is 300 so this becomes 100 k so prandtl number is 0.7 already given and then the thing is velocity velocity is 5000 meter inverse right so if we will solve this we will get 9205 per meter Thanks. So, uh, the numerical value, that is, uh, we don't need the minus, only the numerical value, that is 9205. This is option. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, now, next question. For the case of turbulent boundary layer, the two-dimensional numbers that appear during the non-dimensionalization of energy equation in Reynolds number are... The Noss number and which one? I've already uh, shown you the derivation, right? Three, four questions back. It's probably in the second or third question. And I already told you at that time also that we will be using it on the later half. So, what are the two dimensional number, dimensionless number that we are uh, getting when we are non dimensionalizing? That is, we are like that equation where we have gotten like we, we where we have replaced u with u star v with v star x and l uh, sorry x and y as x star y star like that we got two dimensionless number one is Reynolds number what is that ma'am b hmm? b the cell no, not the system. How? Just let us go to that. You first uh, do it yourself once. Try. The equation we already know, right? This is u del t del x plus b del t del y is equal to alpha del square t del x square. Right? Now you dimensionalize it. Right in terms of dimensionless number. There is non-dimensionless. So. so you will write u in terms of u star. That is u upon u upon u infinity. T in terms of t minus t infinite upon uh, sorry. T minus t s upon t infinite minus t s surface temperature. And b also you will write in terms of v star and x star and y star. You write this x star will be x upon l y star will be y upon it dimensionalize it uh, non dimensionalize it okay hello try once by yourself yes, i've already shown this once you try once yourself if you will face any trouble tell me and we are
Hello? Yeah, have you solved? We have got way more questions to solve tonight. And we have half an hour now. Have you solved well? Option A. It is option A. I said like how do you have to write? Can you tell me? You have non-dimension basic, right? So that concept I have not read. So huh? I have not properly read that concept, so that's why I'm a little confused. Like you have not uh, attended the classes of boundary layer? Only half of them, not properly. Okay, okay. Uh, let me show you. This will be U star when you will like dim non dimensionalize it, it will be del T star upon del X star plus P star del T star del Y star and then square t star del y star. What you will get extra? We'll get extra alpha. Alpha was already there, right? We will get v and l here. So this can be written as alpha by nu kinematic viscosity. Kinematic viscosity into kinematic viscosity upon v. So this is obviously Prendel number, one upon Prendel number, and this is obviously one upon Reynolds number. So this we can write as one upon Reynolds number into Prendel number. Reynolds number is already given in the question, so this will be Prendel number. So this is option number A. Now question number 10. The property of ATE that is uh, uh, it may be large enough compared to the molecular property could be used in the analysis of uh, turbulent boundary layer. Choose the right one about the correctness of the statement from below. Tell me whether it is true or false. it is true yeah. so question number 10 will also be true. now uh, let us solve three more uh, problems four more problems uh, in fact so first one is a two meter and three meter flat plates that is one side is two meter and set another side is three meter flat plate is suspended in a room and is subjected to air flow parallel to the surface. That is as uh, it is given in the diagram. That is it is parallel to the surface. The free stream temperature uh, surface along 3 meter side. 3 meter side it is parallel. So obviously it is very little parallel to meter side as well. The free stream velocity so boundary layer will be developed over here. So we can use the boundary layer equations. The free stream temperature velocity is 20 degree of the air is 20 degree Celsius and 7 meter per second. The total drag force acting on the plate is measured as 0.86. Drag force is given. Determine the average convection uh, heat transfer coefficient for the plate. You have understood? What's the what is the question? You have to find out the heat transfer coefficient. The drag coefficient is given uh, and velocity, temperature uh, of the air. Everything is given. So, there will be two sides, right? The boundary line will be developed in two sides. One is 3 meter side and another is... Uh, Two meters. Just one second. No, no, no. It won't be developed two meters. It is not uh, indicated in the question. Yeah. So uh, we'll be using the three meter, uh, three meter side. Yeah. Correct. So there will be one is two meter side and there is three meter side and it is parallel along three meter side, right? So when uh, uh, another side is two meter side, so. Uh, we will be using that 2 meter and 3 meter as our uh, for, for finding out the surface area over which the boundary layer will be developed. 
right so if uh, if the drag coefficient is already given uh, the value of the drag coefficient uh, that the drag force the value of the drag force is given so from there we can easily find out the drag coefficient and from the drag coefficient uh, we can uh, uh, easily find out uh, here which analogy we'll be using let's check i told you this slide will be very useful so this chilton colburn analogy will be using uh, what it does it co uh, correlates the Nusselt's number is equal to uh, the is a direct correlation having direct correlation with heat transfer coefficient, right? So this what does it do? It correlates with the heat transfer coefficient, the drag coefficient to the heat transfer coefficient. So from here we can find out the heat transfer coefficient, right? So use this one to solve this. This, okay? I'll be giving you three minutes to solve this. Is it fine? Are you solving it or you are having any doubt? Okay, no doubt, then solve it. I am here only.
Hello, have anyone solved it? I can just a minute. Yeah, yeah, tell me. I'm solving just a minute. Uh, it will just take uh, three minutes, nothing more than that. Just check which one to use. Is the answer three point six five? Hmm. Three point six five. No. It has a question. No. Okay, let me solve it for you. First, the surface area will be two into W L. As I have already said, it is two into two into three. That is twelve meters. The flow is along three uh, meter side of the plate, as it is already said, and both side of the plate are exposed to your flow. That is x. We will uh, take uh, three meter. Okay. So um, for the flat plate, the drag force is equivalent to the friction force. That is, F D is equal to friction force. So friction force can be written as C F A S rho V square by two. We already know this. We have already studied it. Right. Uh, so C F is equal to F F that is the friction force into A S rho V square by two. So this is 0.86 newton. Surface area is 12 meter square. Density is 1.204 kg per meter cube. Seven meter. Uh, and but the values are not given in the question. The density. Why have not you asked me? Whenever is a thing is something is not given, na? Do ask me. Just one second. Okay, you write the values then. So how we have solved without the density? Then just uh, like with not given, I must have forgotten. That's why I have to give. So I have, I have to include it. I have to search it somewhere, and I have to include it. So this okay, so that's by 2. Then uh, we are just converting it to Newton, so meter per second square. Uh, kg, this is meter per second square. This is what Newton. This is multiplied. So this will be coming out to be 0.00243. As by children told one equation and logic. We already know that H is equal to C F by two to rho V C P by Prandtl number two by three. So if we will solve this zero point zero zero two four three by two, one point two zero four kg per meter cube, seven meter per second, and C P is one zero zero seven joule per kg degree Celsius. Uh, seven. Uh, okay. These values are not given, right? How you have solved it without these values? I have forgotten completely to include these values. So this is the bundle number. 
So this will come out to be 12.7 watt per meter square to the Celsius. Okay. Anything you are unable to understand? No, I the value is not given, so I just randomly. No, no, how? Then the answer will not be correct, no? Because there yes. is some specific, uh, the air is there, there it, this will have some specific mantle comfort depending upon the temperature. So everything will change. Okay. Density uh, you for air density is fine. Density you will know, and uh, CP also you can find out from the internet. The values will be almost similar. But uh, the Crandall number, I uh, like you need you need that for this temperature. Crandall number is a time uh, Crandall number for the. Air. Okay. Uh, next question is. Uh, engine oil at 60 degrees Celsius flows over the upper surface of a 5 meter long flat plate whose temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. That is engine oil is flowing over the plate and plate temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and engine oil temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. So, so the heat will flow from the engine oil towards the plate. right? And the velocity of the engine oil flowing is 2 meter per second. Determine the total drag force. Total drag force need to calculate the, the same method you will be using. In the previous, like I have shown you in the previous equation. Sorry, previous question, right? Determine the total drag force and the rate of heat transfer per unit weight of the end plate. The thing that we like, the same methodology, fundamental methodology that we have used to solve question number 11, same thing will be used in question number 12, right? So, you have to find out total drag force and the rate of heat transfer. You have understood, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and then all the values are also included here. Solve it.
from the CP value is not given. Which one? CP. CP value. Where do you need CP value? Um, in that uh, Wolven's equation that uh, uh, in the formula HCX. Wolven analogy you will be using here. It's a uh, it's straightforward, right? Uh, you have to like here drag force is given. From there you can find out CF, right? And from CF, uh, just wait for one second. Uh, from CF, Nusser's number you can find out like if you know the Reynolds number, right? So first you'll calculate the Reynolds is flow over flat plate. Uh, if CP is not given, these are the values that you need. So you would just go for the Reynolds number calculation and based on Reynolds number, the first page that I've shown you all the equation involved. So whether it is laminar or turbulent flow, you will uh, find the Nusser's number, right? And from the Nusser's number, you can easily find out H. So it is intentionally not given. Okay, Have you solved it? The problem is the answer three seventy six point seven six. For what? For heat transfer uh, coefficient uh, or heat transfer heat? Heat transfer coefficient. Mm, no. Okay, let me solve it for you. Wait.
सो फाइव मीटर लेंथ एट फाइव मीटर इज गिवेन एट फाइव मीटर ओनली वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट एवरीथिंग राइट सो फर्स्ट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वील गो एज अ वर्ड सेट वील गो फॉर एन ऑल नंबर सो वी एल बाई न्यू सो इट इज टू मीटर पर सेकेंड फाइव मीटर अपॉन टू फोर्टी टू इंटू टेन दी पावर माइनस सिक्स मीटर स्क्वायर पर सेकेंड सो दिस विल कम आउट एट फोर पॉइंट वन थ्री इंटू टेन दी पावर फोर दैट इज लेस देन फाइव इंटू टेन दी पावर फाइव ए क्रिटिकल वन इज दिस एज अ वॉट वी गिवेन इन द फर्स्ट नंबर सो दिस इज लैमिना Okay, so it is one point three two eight root over Reynolds number. So if it is that, then it will come out to be three two eight root over four point one three into ten to the power four, and that is zero point zero two zero seven. Hmm. Now, for flat plate CD is equal to CF. Okay. This we have used in the previous question also. So drag force is equal to CF surface area. That is area of projection rho v square by two. So this is point two zero seven into five into one meter square into eight seventy six kg per meter cube into two meter per second rho square upon two. Right. And this we convert at one newton, one kg meter per second square. Right. So this will, if we will solve this, you can solve this later on. This will be one eighty one newton. Now for laminar flow, as I have given in the first slide, Nusselt's number is equal to point six six four, Reynolds number point five, Prandtl number one by three. So uh, this will come out to be one nine one eight, because Reynolds number is four point one three four four, and Prandtl number is two eight seven seven. Right. So this is uh, Nusselt's number is H L by K. So H will come out to be Nusselt's number into K by L. That is point one four four watt per meter degree Celsius. This is K. L is five meter, and this in multiply to one nine one eight. So this this comes out to be fifty five point two watt per meter square degree Celsius. So next the heat transfer rate. So the heat transfer rate will be H A S T infinite minus T S. Cause the temperature of the oil is more. Oh, my video is off. Cause the temperature of the oil is more as compared to the surface temperature or the flat plate. Right. So this is fifty-five point two watt per meter square degree Celsius. Five into one meter square and sixty minus twenty degree Celsius. This comes out to be one one zero four zero watt. Okay, any doubt? No. Okay. Uh, the next question is a bit bigger, but should we solve it today? That's nine three already. You tell me if you want, then I can solve it. Next question. We'll proceed to the next question. Otherwise, I'll continue all this in the next class. Yeah, your bitch. Huh? I'm not you one. No, no, no. It's it's you who I'll be teaching, right? So if you want, I can go with the next question. Otherwise, we can take it up. We have two more questions. Actually, three more questions actually. Question number twelve is twelve is done, right? Ah, two more question. Thirteen. Question number thirteen has two parts. I can give you the question. You can uh, solve it up in like in your home. This okay. is the question for the thirteen. Question number thirteen. So it said that the local atmospheric pressure in Denver, Colorado, uh, that is at an elevation of sixteen one zero meter, is eighty three point four. Kilo Pascal. This is atmospheric pressure, right? The air at this pressure is 20 degrees Celsius and flows with a velocity of 8 meter per second over a 1.5 meter and 6 meter flat plate whose temperature is 140 degrees Celsius. Simple. Determine the rate of heat transfer from the plate if the air flows parallel to 
uh, 6 meter long side and 1.5 meter long side so first for the first case we will take 6 meter as our x and for the second case we'll take 1.5 meter as x right okay so same way the as we have solved in the previous problems same way we have to do like this problem specifically question number 12 question number 12 is will be the benchmark for the this question number 13 so you will solve it in the same okay ma'am so do you want to do one part of this question let us solve one part right so the first part let us uh, focus on 6 meter long side so if 6 meter long side is the side where uh, parallel to which the air flows then determine the rate of heat transfer from the plane this part is solved same way the same way as we have solved now the same way we will solve this first find the reynolds number depend on that we will find the nusselt number here they didn't ask for the drag force and drag force even uh, is not given so we will just depend on the reynolds number based on reynolds number we will select the nusselt number like uh, which equation we will put and from that nusselt number we will get the heat transfer coefficient and from heat transfer coefficient we can find the heat transfer rate right do that the first part so i'll come back in one second
Hi, have you solved? Ma'am, yes, it came out to be uh, 1543.68 words. 1543. No, 1543. 1543. Point. Ah. 68. Somewhere it have gone wrong. Like, you are. Uh, let's see, transfer. Right? It will come out as. Almost you are close. The value should be fourteen hundred three zero zero, right? One four three zero zero. It should be the value. Okay. okay, then it's almost closed. So let us take this value. And you have understood how to solve this, right? Yes, ma'am. Very simple. So. Let us proceed with the solution, then we'll end today's class. And B part, uh, I'll give you as homework. You solve this on your own. We'll discuss this in the next class. So, question number 13. Part A. This is Reynolds number BL by nu. This is 8 meter per second into 6 meter upon 2.548 into 10 to the power minus 5 meter per second, meter square per second. So this is 1.884 into 10 to the power 6. This is greater than 5 into 10 to the power 5. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, then Nusser's number is equal to HL by K will be 0 0.02 because this is turbulent flow. So 0 0.0296. <coughs> Reynolds number 0.8. Prendel number 1.3. <coughs> so this comes out to be 2772.51. You got it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Then H is equal to Nusser's number K by L. So, this comes out to be 13.64 Watt per meter square degree Celsius. You got this value? No, oh, man, that is only like... Okay, so K will be here uh, 0 0.02953 and mm -hmm. L will be 6. Yes, huh? You put, uh, you have, uh, you put this value, right? These values only you have, uh, you have given, right? And that uh, the Reynolds number is something uh, wrong. So I will modify it. But the process, I have done the same process. Okay, then fine. Uh, so this you rectify it later. And yes. uh, surface area will be WL. This is 1.5. Obviously, this is 1.5 into 6. Uh -huh. ah, so this will be yes. 9 meters square. Okay, then heat transfer rate will be H A S T S minus T infinity. So H is 13.64 into surface area is 9 into temperature is 140 minus 3. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Then this will come out to be 1.43 into 10 to the power 4. Watt. That is, oh, you are almost close, just renew somebody you have to check this. Yes. Okay. So the second part, uh, you solve it yourself. It is just be the other side, and I'll also show you the four, uh, 14 number, the last problem. So this is the problem. You can take a, a picture of this, and you can solve it. Try out that you. Yes, yes. We'll discuss this on the next class. Okay. Okay. Take, have, have you taken the picture? Yes, ma'am. Okay, then I'll end the class today. I'll meet you all next week. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you.